Hi everyone, my name is Anna Maria B. Pacheco and in this video I will be discussing about bilingual education and English only education. So without further ado, let me start the discussion. Bilingual education versus English only. So, there is a debate over bilingual education and English-only education. The supporters of English-only laws argue that by allowing English-learning students to study in bilingual education programs, well-meaning schools actually do these students a disservice. The reasoning is that bilingual education programs inhibit their students' ability to learn English by allowing them to rely on their native languages in class. The proponents of English-only laws also argue that by requiring all students to learn and speak in one language, children are more likely to intermingle with each other, leading to well-rounded perspectives, while the opponents argue that it's inconclusive whether English-only instruction help students to learn English more effectively than bilingual education programs. The supporters of bilingual programs believe that the programs meet the critical need of immigrant students for basic English instruction, and supporters further argue that putting students who speak little to no English into classes with native speakers only leads to mutual frustrations. So, some people question whether English-only instruction may lead some immigrant students to feel a loss of heritage. So, what is bilingual education, by the way? So, bilingual education is a term that refers to the teaching of academic content in two languages, in a native and second language. So, varying amounts of each language are used depending on the outcome goal of the model. So there are different programs models that can be used in bilingual education. So historically, program models used for English language learners or ELL have focused on helping students transition from their native language to English. So what is transitional bilingual education? So it involves the partial or total use of the child's home language when the child enters school, and later a change to the use of the school language only. So the goal of transitional bilingual education is to transition students into English-only classrooms as quickly as possible. This is sometimes called early exit bilingual education. Next is the maintenance bilingual education. So maintenance bilingual education involves the use of the child's home language when the child enters school, then a gradual change to the use of the school language for teaching some subjects and the native language for teaching others. So bilingual education gives ELL students the opportunity to learn grade level academic skills in their native language until they have acquired enough language to achieve academically in English too. So the advantages and disadvantages of bilingual education. So these are the common advantages. First, in bilingual education, the students are exposed to a new language new culture, and new findings, and this eventually adds knowledge to the student. So, another one is, often bilingual education is also considered to elevate the literacy skills and the content knowledge of the students. So, another one is, with increased knowledge, bilingual education can make children adapt differently languages that may help them to achieve more options for a successful career. And once students are able to learn the second language, they become acceptable 
to learning more languages. Thus, with improved communication standards, they can have a brighter career. So, bilingual languages also make a person capable of producing new sounds learned from different languages. They can improve any anxieties or loneliness and improve their personalities overall. And bilingual education renders students of outstanding merit as it makes them adaptable to learn and adjust new things easily. So another is the common disadvantages. So bilingual languages can prove unworthy as there might be an attitude of ignorance from students who might not like to study new languages and accept new culture. Often seen that when a student learns a second language, he or she loses interest to study other subjects, which can also result in an adverse effect on the overall academic development. So, another one, often seen that bilingual education suffers a great deal due to a scarcity of experience and good quality faculties. And also, it is expensive to have a program of bilingual education. It also makes sense that without learning several languages for communicating, if a student learns just one common language, that can as well help him to communicate. So there has always been a considerable amount of debate about the acceptance or rejection of bilingual education in schools. However, based upon facts, both the sides have their own justification which differs from person to person. So, what is an English-only policy? The English-only movement, also known as the Official English Movement, is a political movement that advocates for the use of only the English language in official United States government operations through the establishment of English as the only official language in the U.S. So the U.S. has never been had a legal policy proclaiming an official national language. However, at some times and places, there have been various moves to promote or require the use of English, such as in Native American boarding schools. U.S. English is the nation's oldest and largest organization advocating for official English. The movement has come to be seen as a far-right talking point in contemporary U.S. politics and a dog whistle for racism against non-English speakers in the country. So the education of children from disadvantaged groups has been frequently a topic of political debate. The current English-only movement, which advocates that English can be the official and only language used in the United States, dramatically influences the life of language minority children their families, and educators working with them. So, the issues on English-only policy. The enactment of English-only legislation in many states not only threatens to inhibit the academic advancement of many language minority children, but also deprives these children of the many social advantages resulting from using their mother tongue. Researchers who are Wong Fillmore, 1991, and Gibson, 1998, have maintained that the consequences of losing a mother tongue for language minority children are often extensive and severe. Wong Fillmore explains that in homes where parents do not communicate with children in the mother tongue, family communication may deteriorate, where parents and children do not share a common language. Communication is often limited to the basic necessities, preventing parents from transmitting to their children the complex set of values, beliefs, wisdom, and understanding which provide the foundation for their children's learning and development. So when a school reinforces an English-only policy, 
it sends a message to all children that minority languages have less value than English as tools of learning. And because the school is a microcosm of society, this message also suggests that those languages are not an integral part of the American society. This message equally deprives mainstream children of the opportunity to experience the cultural diversity in this country and robs every child of the chance to learn the full potential of human possibilities, which is said by Heath on 1986. So for these reasons, the English-only movement should be carefully and critically reviewed in order to accord language diversity its due respect. So before I start with discussing the five fundamental strategies for bilingual learners, let me first ask you a question. So if you are a teacher, what do you do when half of your class speaks one language but the other half speaks another language? As a teacher, it would be impossible to speak more than one language at the same time when you are discussing in your classroom. And no matter how much you slow down, repeat instructions, or demonstrate the task at hand, often you are only met with blank stares. Or worse, your students will stop listening to you. When you start um, using their second language, which they may have um, a hard time understanding or comprehending. But is it really their fault? Teachers in dual language classrooms face an incredibly difficult task or challenge because they need to teach a linguistically diverse class of students to read and write in both languages, while also teaching increasingly difficult academic content in two languages. Our teachers are the one who need to almost magically turn a bunch of kids into bilingual learners. That is why the educators or teachers are provided with these five fundamental strategies to promote linguistic cross-pollination among students in dual language classrooms. So I'm now going to discuss about the five fundamental strategies for bilingual learners. So first is using group work strategically. So one advantage of dual language classrooms is the opportunity for students to work with classmates who are not from the same community, language, background, or culture. So in creating groups, you can integrate heterogeneous or homogeneous groupings. So in heterogeneous groups, it allows students to practice communicating and collaborating across languages and culture. It is when a diverse group of students is put in the same cooperative learning group. So this mixed group may consist of students of varying ages, educational levels, interests, and special needs. Students are of approximately the same age but function in different academic, social, and emotional levels. So this method of heterogeneous grouping allow students to learn from each other's differences and actively interact with diverse individuals while at the same time sharing their unique abilities and interests. On the other hand, um, homogeneous groups allow you to tailor specific learning objectives to learners with differentiated needs. So this in this type of grouping, students who function at similar academic social and emotional levels are being placed in the same cooperative learning group. For example, um, children with special needs are placed in one group while the gifted and talented students are placed in another. So in homogeneous grouping, it helps all students in the classroom to stay on the same page as their classmates. So in designing group tasks, 
there are two ways on how you provide the tasks for your students. So first is the structured. Um, students need to use formal language to plan a group project according to a graphic organizer. So in this design, the students will learn how to organize their words in a formal way. While in unstructured, to interview classmates and collect data based on their these projects. So here, the language may not be formally organized because the students are given the chance to finish the project in their own way of interview. So the second one is um, adopt a content-based language instruction approach. So to keep up with the academic rigors for your language learners, content-based language instruction is an effective teaching approach that incorporates both language and content area objectives into each lesson. One way to think about it is to have an SWBAT or students will be able to. For content area objectives, and another SWBAT for the language objectives. So for example, when teaching a unit on the life cycle of butterflies, a content objective might be for students to explain the life cycle in a poster presentation, while the language objective would be to use the language of sequencing such as first, next, then, and finally to express the life cycle. So you have to make sure that the students know what the content and language goals are for each lesson so they can self-regulate their learning and reflect on how well they achieved each objective. So the third one is to maintain a positive relationship with all students. So, students from any linguistic or ethnic background who have positive social interactions with their teachers have better academic performance. As a teacher, reflect on how you perceive student behavior and achievement in your class and recognize the biases you bring to the classroom as you interact with students from backgrounds that are different from your own. So, positive teachers, student relationships entails teachers creating an open communication as well as emotional and academic support with their students. So as a teacher, you should teach with enthusiasm and passion, have a positive attitude, and incorporate humor into the lessons to make the learning fun. So the fourth one is to set clear expectations about when to use each language so in dual language classes it is very natural for students to want to use their native language in order to express themselves this however often result in children who only speak to others with the same language background so to encourage students to persevere in their second language try setting expectations about which language students should be using during different parts of the day, lesson, or task. Not only will they learn about how to, to problem solve in moments of linguistic difficulty, example is asking their peers for help, but they will also be exposed to and better able to emulate their peers who are native language speakers of their second language. So for teachers, it is more effective to use monolingual lesson delivery than language mixing during lessons. So, monolingual lesson delivery means that for a certain period of time, instruction is only given in one particular language without translation from teacher assistants or other aids. This will engage students in prolonged language exposure of academic content in their second language and also helps them develop listening strategies in their second language. So lastly is to allow students to translanguage. So 
Trans language is the act of strategically using words from two lang linguistic repertoires to communicate effectively. So this could be saying one sentence in English and another in Tagalog, or even mixing the two languages within one sentence. This is what we call um, Taglish because of mixing Tagalog and English language. So welcoming this natural linguistic process into the classroom allows children to engage in the rigors of difficult academic content and express themselves in deep classroom discussions as they draw from their two languages as a resource. So in time, as students gain a stronger command for each language, they will also gain confidence to communicate in each language individually. Most importantly, because they were able to translanguage, they will not have missed out on crucial big ideas and class debates that were discussed in their developing second language. So those are the five fundamental strategies of bilingual learners. I hope you learned something from my discussion. So that's all. Thank you for listening.